What is up here is this minute zero and welcome back to Let's Play Fatal Frame Main of Blackwater Blind. In the last episode, we started Ayane's journey, we completed the first and second threads, and had quite a bit of fun doing so. It's this impressively uh, functional stealth gameplay in a Fatal Frame environment, using a completely different character who's not at all built for a photography game. So, let's continue with what I'm actually enjoying quite a bit. The purple thread connected to Tsumugi vanishes at the Shrine of the Ephemeral, atop Mount Hikami. Ayane makes her way in. Oh, so we're heading into the Shrine of the Ephemeral. Ooh boy. The purple thread leads Ayane to the Shrine of the Ephemeral on Mount Hikami's summit. She heads inside the old shrine, which seems to exude darkness itself. We know it's quite the dark place, obviously from our own experiences with the Shrine of the Ephemeral. We've gotten quite familiar with it. I wonder if we're going to have to do as much hunting around for keys. Honestly, I hope not. Like I was saying, I appreciate the linearity of some of these segments. The purple thread is getting stronger. Tsumiki must be close. Alright. Looks like there's a note up here. Note left behind three, but appears to be a scrap of notebook paper has been dropped here. She told me I could be strong, so long as I have this thread. I don't know what to do. I want to be strong. Thinking I can't be strong is worse than not thinking at all. Eh, that's dark. She's obviously talking about Ayane as well. Mirror stone? Okay. Let's see, which way do we want to go? Hmm. Seems to be back in that direction. I guess we'll walk over this way. And see what we find. So we're gonna have a difficult time getting past this guy without doing any stunning. So stun we will. Oh, is there another ghost over here? There is. That's not good. Charge. Ah, darn it. Okay, so that didn't turn out very well. Our conceal meter is not doing so hot. But that's alright, because we'll just go to the next room. Can I go in the room, though? Think oh, what? Okay. So there's a lot going on here, obviously. Um, I hit X to dodge. Obviously, didn't exactly dodge. I wanted to pick up these uh, embers, but I don't think it's going to happen. Not embers, it's ink or whatever, right? Alright, can we get a double? There we go. That is something we desperately needed. Can I pick up whatever this is, please? I'm really trying. <laughs> there we go ink bottle. Alright, let's get ready to double up again here, because we're definitely going to need it if we're going to want to get out of here alive. Okay. Now we can head on over this way. Oh, really? I mean, I'll dodge. I don't think things are going as well as I would have liked them to, <laughs> to say the least. Now we're kind of, well, I say we, like, we're all involved, but uh, kind of running around a little bit aimlessly here, hoping for the best. Just looking for some sort of reprieve from all of this attention. Am I? Am I safe for a minute? Nope, I guess not. Oh no, I charged up and then missed. That's not good. That's very not good. Charge. Alright, we'll just have to do the... I got a fatal frame? Huh. So you can get a fatal frame. Also, interesting that our concealment meter in general is just a lot smaller now. Like, we've permanently lost a component of our conceal meter. Alright. 
Should I use one of the uh, oops, items? Should I use an herbal medicine? I think this is what replenishes the conceal meter. That's interesting, just in general. Um, I'll use an herbal medicine. I don't want to have to deal with uh, the flash I read the whole time. And hopefully things go a little bit more smoothly from here on out. This room. Anybody in here? Doesn't seem so. The other question is, I mean, we're making our way around, right? Where exactly are we trying to go? I fear we were supposed to go into um, this room all the way up here, and we just screwed it up. <laughs> but we'll see, I guess. Anybody over this way? No? This direction? Let's see where the thread takes us. Yeah. I would, I would bet, then, that we need to make our way over here. So what I'll do is I'll head down to the first floor, and we can work our way over that way. At least that'll allow us the opportunity to explore some areas we haven't explored yet. Right? Oh, alright. We'll chill for a moment. It's, something's on to us. Charge up and get ready. Oh, we have been discovered by something. I don't know where. Oh, hello. So at least you've been stunned. Is there something else I can do in here? Oh, we're gonna dodge that. Ideally. Anything else? Is there really nothing to do in here? It's just a dead end, essentially. Alright, then we'll run out. <laughs> We are, we are not killing it this thread, that's for sure. And I guess we'll, we'll head back into the reliquary room. These, these ghosts keep teleporting after us, making it awfully difficult to escape. I wonder if I like have to stun them in order to get away. It sounds like they're still attacking me. My concealment meter isn't going up at all. But hopefully we'll eventually be out of the range within which they'll track us. If not, that's a little bit frustrating. Oh, what? So we'll go down here. That's what we needed to do. Also, look how little our, or how small our concealment meter is. <laughs> That's not going to spell well for us. That way. Interesting. I don't really know exactly where the game wants me to go at the moment. Oh, I shouldn't have run. Shouldn't have run. Shouldn't have run. Pick up some ink. No, these are actually embers. <laughs> That's pretty funny. The number of times I've mistakenly said embers. Yeah, so which way do we want to go? I guess we'll head back towards the middle? Because the game seems to be telling us to go that way. It probably wants to take us back upstairs and across. Should be a ghost on our right. We'll stun them, and then we'll head upstairs. We've gotta be more ready than usual to attack these guys and get past them. Because again, our concealment meter is not gonna, gonna do a lot for us. Come on, Ayane, up the stairs. Hurry before, before our ghosty friend gets mad at us and comes after us. where we're supposed to be? Probably not, but might as well look, I guess. Oh, hello. Really? <laughs> well, 
that's not exactly helpful. Miss Shrine Maiden. We're getting pulled? Yeah. I don't know what that whole deal was about, but... Okay, charge, charge, charge. Alright. Got a good stun in there. Any items or anything I can do in here? It does not seem so. Alright, so then let's get out of here. I think we're okay. However, we're gonna have a friend to deal with at the bottom of these stairs. So let's get ready for that, and then we'll have to run past him, slash through him. Actually, I should probably just walk. It'll give us enough time. Alright, so some, a couple things are gonna be waiting for us on the other side of here. Get ready for that. Is it a couple or just one? Okay, just seems like one for now. Okay, keep on moving. Not sure I'm even moving really in the, the right direction anymore, but I'm moving because I have to stay moving if I want to stay out of these ghosts. Way. Okay, so we can actually make our way back up this way, can't we? Although, what? It's leading that way? Oh, I did not like the sound of that. <laughs> that sounded like one of those maidens. Which way are we supposed to go? In this area, the Hall of Caskets, maybe? I'm honestly not sure. The thread is, is a little bit confusing at the moment. We'll head this way for the sake of it. There's, there she is. That's Tsumugi. <laughs> However, we did so. We managed to find her. I ought to save her. Gotta get out of there. Ayane searched the shrine of the ephemeral. She located and rescued Tsumugi, who was being swallowed by the black water. An unsettling presence surrounded the pair. Beings from the netherworld were all around. <laughs> nice, S plus. Only because, of course, they don't judge you based on how much damage you take. Interesting. <laughs> so how are Ayane and Tsumugi gonna escape that situation, right? Yeah, the, okay, last thread, escape with Tsumugi. It's gonna be tough, I imagine. Ayane rescues Tsumugi from the shrine, but the two are surrounded by creatures from the netherworld. Ayane takes Tsumugi with her and plans their escape. Okay, well, we'll give it a go. Wash away. Uh-oh, hopefully this, hopefully this little side quest has a happy ending. Within the Shrine of the Ephemeral, Ayane locates Tsumugi and rescues her from the Black Water. The next step is to plan their escape. Surrounded by evil spirits, Ayane knows she has to think fast. Luckily, we're relatively familiar with the Shrine of the Ephemeral's layout by now. It's dangerous here. We need to get out fast. Yeah. Um, so let's run on out up this way. My only concern is... Okay. Tsumugi is not, like, in there. Oh, wait, no, she is! What the heck? Alright, so we'll, we'll stun them. Come on, Tsumugi. Any day now, please. Tsumugi strats. 
Nice. Alright, come on. Let's go. So we actually have to wait for her, it seems. How do we want to get out of here? This is probably our best bet. So instead of going where I'm facing, let's turn to the right and go over here. Although, naturally, that won't be made easy for us. Alright. We've been discovered. Come on. So while we're waiting on Tsumugi to follow, I'm going to ready this so that when they're inevitably ready to go again, <laughs> they'll be stunned enough that Tsumugi can walk over as well. Man, our, our conceal bar is so low, I'm shocked it actually carried over from the pr previous thread. Naturally. So we'll go around the edge here. I'll wait till I can get both of them in the frame of the flashlight, and then stun. That was pretty solid. And now, while I wait for Tsumugi to get across as well, come on. Tsumugi, come on. Please? Aw, oh, man. Alright, so we got you. Tsumugi is there. I'm just gonna do a quick little stun there. Alright, that didn't really work. <laughs> Was not quite enough. But, hey, Tsumugi kind of made it out alive, I think. Uh oh. Oh, what? You're out there? No, go away. I thought there was a ghost, like, just standing in front of us that I had to stun. Not on the outside. Must have, like, teleported out there. Either way, I'd say we're making decent progress. Stun this guy and then get past him. That should be a pretty strong stun. Come on, Tsumugi. Go through this door, and we're back close to the entrance. Oh, interesting! My concealment bar is really low right now, right? And I think that's reflected in the, the seal that's on INA's back. You can see how faded the, the symbols are. That's really cool. That's like such an unnecessary, but much appreciated touch, you know? Oh, and now we have this, this friend. I'm gonna get a nice stun for you. Alright, let's rock and roll, Tsumugi. Come on, entrance is right over here. AKA, the exit. <laughs> this is where we're trying to go, yes? Alright, so we've made it outside of the, the main building of the shrine. Perfect. I was like, Tsumugi, please be following me. Let's head out here. Are they gonna do the classic fatal frame? Like, you've gotta walk all the way back down the mountain again? Probably. Oh, or not. に思っているはず。家族の絆を信じれば、そのことがわかる。大丈夫。お前は強くなれる。
That was really pretty. <laughs> that was really pretty. Also, well, we got an, an A rank. Um, that was really short, too. Uh, both of these past threads totally could have grouped those in with the previous episode, but uh, wow. All right, so we saw like the ending of that segment, and now we've completed those bonus episodes with Ayane, which were really good. Like, that was genuinely very solid gameplay. Uh, they did a great job of incorporating a ninja, a separate character who's used to more action-packed combat into the Fatal Frame universe, and made me care about two characters I know very little about. One, Tsumugi, I know nothing about. So that was that was really neat. I'm, I'm impressed with these extra episodes, and I think if they did more with this concept, this gameplay in future games, I think it would go over really well, at least with me. So, I hope you guys enjoyed them as well. Given how short this episode is, and I was planning on doing another bonus episode for some of like the artwork and costumes and everything, um, I, I might as well do that in this one. So, let's take a look. First, do I have to load the game? I probably do have to load the game for costumes. I, I'm actually shocked we didn't unlock costumes from completing that, but um, I guess we do, or we don't. So, let's see, all of Yuri, Ren, Miyu, we can take a look at all their costumes. There's the normal outfit, there's the white kimono, there's the school uniform, that one's pretty nice. The Miyu Amakura outfit, oh, you can have, oh, wait a minute, oh, these are probably from the, these are the uh, legacy ones from the earlier Fatal Frames. Bei Kurosawa, Kurosawa, interesting. So we play as a Kurosawa in one of the earlier ones. Punk Ensemble requires 10,000 points. I mean, we have 300,000 points, so I'm not afraid of buying suits or buying any, uh, you know, accessories or whatever. Maybe, although there are quite a few of them. We actually didn't unlock a good number of them. Probably have to beat a number of episodes on Nightmare and all that stuff. But that's all right. We have quite a few of them. I won't go through all of Nightmare Mode to unlock these to show you guys. I'll play through Nightmare Mode some other time, I'm sure. But let's see what else we have. So the punk, the punk ensemble. Ooh, that's actually a really cool costume. Then the cutesy goth ensemble. I like that one too. Although I honestly, I kind of like the punk ensemble a little bit more than than this one. Then there's swimsuit blue. This one's nice. It's also probably the most fitting thing to wear given how wet she gets throughout all of this game. Then the triathlon suit. That's an interesting addition. I mean, like, she, she wears it well, but it's just kind of funny. Black glasses, okay. Coleco glasses. Bunny ears. You can put bunny ears on Yuri. <laughs> it looks so out of place. The maid's hairband, okay. All right, I can see it, especially if you were to, you know, pair it with like the cutesy goth ensemble. I think this goes together very nicely. What else do we got? The white lily. Ooh, that's like, um, that's like, uh, what was her name? Ose? Ose Kurosawa was wearing? I like that a lot. And then same with the black lily, I'm sure. Yeah, that goes pretty nicely. Then the bunny tail? Oh! <laughs> like, um, this would probably be a lot easier to see if we had, not this, but maybe like the swimsuit. And even that doesn't really go very well. Maybe the school uniform? No. Normal outfit. <laughs> And the bunny ears. That's pretty funny. I can appreciate it. What's kind of a bummer is they didn't include the Nintendo um, exclusive, you know, like Samus and Link inspired costumes, but not the end of the world. In this cage ring? What's that? Is that the ring there? What is that? Can I... I can zoom in. It zooms in on her head, though. So I don't know how to zoom in on the ring itself. Hmm. Okay, well, I don't I don't really know. There's probably some sort of inside joke there or reference I'm just not familiar with. So ultimately, let's see, what would I, what would I go with in the next playthrough? 
probably... Well, if I play other Fatal Frame games, I would not be surprised if I ended up choosing one of these ones. That would be pretty neat. Otherwise, I'd probably go with uh, the Punk Ensemble or the School Uniform. Alright, <laughs> on to Ren, who has considerably fewer costumes. <laughs> It's almost comical. Uh, so he's got a kimono, which actually looks really cool. That's got to be inspired by um, Aso, right? It looks a lot cooler, in my opinion, than his normal outfit. Then there's the Kei Amakura outfit. That's also actually quite cool. And then there's the Groom's outfit. <laughs> That's pretty neat. It looks way too like stylish and modern uh, for then, but it's it's got its charm, that's for sure. Square glasses, sunglasses, nice. The white lenses do go well with the groom's outfit. Fox ears. Okay, okay. And then a fox tail. All right, I mean, I, I can see it. <laughs> then we got Miyu, who also has a white kimono. Miku Hinasaki outfit one. This is probably from one of the earlier Fatal Frames. Miku Hinasaki outfit two. Yeah, almost certainly. Mayu Amakura. Interesting. And then Miku Hinasaki outfit, the Tormented. Oh, this is from Fatal Frame three. That's pretty cool. Cutesy goth ensemble, but light. Huh. That's pretty neat too, actually. Then swimsuit, which is yellow. Yellow is my favorite color, but I honestly, it, I don't think it's like perfect in this setting. Swimsuit, oops. Swimsuit pink. That's a pretty nice swimsuit. Red glasses, silver glasses. I very rarely add glasses to characters I play. And then she gets cat ears, not the bunny ears <laughs> or the fox ears, but the cat ears, a maid's hairband. Okay, and that, of course, is going to go well with the white cutesy goth ensemble. They're by design, like, to go together. And then, what else do we have? The white lily, which we already know what that's going to look like. The black lily, of course, and then a... Oh, a cat tail as well. And the in this cage ring, which is some reference I don't quite get. But that's, uh, that's all right. <laughs> Um, any anything else in the meantime? No, I think that's that's all the costumes we have. Yeah, let's do it. It'll make it that much fun, <laughs> that much more fun when I play through in nightmare mode. So those are all the costumes that I have unlocked from obviously doing everything you've seen me do up until this point, as well as those that are included with the digital deluxe edition. Again, shout out to Koei Tecmo. And now let's take a look at the art book for this game. I'm so excited to see. I love art books, especially physical ones. Honestly, like if there's one piece of you know feedback I have for Koei Tecmo about the release of this game, it's please, please, please release it physically. I pre-ordered it from Japan. It got canceled as well as my pre-order bonus. I eventually found another copy and um, it, it actually came in the other day. And so I'm very excited to have a physical copy of the game, but something like this art book as well as, I don't know, some of the pre-order bonuses they got in Japan would have been really nice to have over here. Um, but anyways, let's look at the artwork and artworks and snaps for this game. Fatal Frame, Maiden of Black Water. Chapters. Show track title or... Oh, so this is... Oh, this is meant to literally look like a book. First of all, this is a very cool start. So we'll turn the page. Artworks and snaps. That visual on the left is easily my favorite. They used a whole bunch of promotional artwork for this game and the cover um, that they used, the cover art they eventually they decided on for this game is cool, but I honestly like the one on the left here better. And I think it's um, what they used for the Wii U release. And I understand wanting to differentiate the Wii U release, so I, I get it. But that visual on the left is really cool. The, the Maiden of Black Water, always very neat. In the top left, that scene was one of the most beautiful. It was it was so eye-catching right off the bat. It was like, look what we can do with these sunsets and this water and like these characters, and really made us for a stunning shot. Wow, and that top right one, I really like that one. Oh, I can select these individually? Yeah, look at that. That's awesome. Dang, I should have come here for thumbnails. <laughs> So we'll scroll through these this way. Ooh, I like this one a lot. That's really cool. 
This one's really neat. Let me see. Turn page, zoom, show track title. Okay. Whoa. This one's really cool. What's it called? The Pale Mistress Approaches. Maiden in the Mist. The Fatal Glance. Maiden's Memories. Effigies in Shirogiku. Whoa! That's such a beautiful picture! Like, what? Also, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm like, kicking myself in the butt right now. Like, this would have been great for getting thumbnails, <laughs> rather than having to get snapshots, you know, from my gameplay. But... Nothing too crazy there. Ooh, this is, um, or this is gonna be, yeah, this is the artwork for all of the different drops, right? This is the Finding Mew, right? Yeah. The Reliquary when... Ooh. Ah, man, these, these, these pieces of art are awesome. I love getting to look at artwork for the games I, I've really enjoyed. Again, it'd be nice to have these physically, like a, like a poster or tapestry or something like that. But honestly, I've never been one to really get like digital deluxe editions, and having this digital art book to flip through like this and see it on, uh, on a nice TV is also actually a really nice experience. I'm pleasantly surprised. Okay, that's Haruka. Oh, so these are some of the... Oh, what's her name again? Fuyuhi. That's what it is. I never reminded myself of what her name was. But Haruka and the sunset. And then we've got Fuyuhi, who unfortunately met a rather tragic fate. We never heard from Haruka again, did we? Then we have the Pillars and Ghost Marriage Bride. Some of the uh, post-mortem photographs, right? This is the one that, you know, set off everything for our friends. And then we're getting some of the Fatal Glance pictures. Oh, that's, uh, that's certainly one to turn to. <laughs> and then we have, this is Miku, isn't it? Then we have Fuyuhi, or is this Haruka? I'm not sure. And then Ayane? That's a surprise. Ayane appears, tries to slice Ghost on ineffectively. This artwork is really cool too. Dang, I'm, I'm really impressed with all the art in this game. And then these endings. Again, just Sunset is something that was done so well in this game. And again, I talked so much about the, you know, the beautiful horror, right? Horrific beauty, however you want to call it. Uh, so that's, that's the end of it. Oh man, and so we can show the title, or we can change the audio, or we can look at the audio. Interesting. So there's a whole bunch of music, like a lot of music. What's interesting is how similar some of it sounds, but probably how, probably how like fine-tuned each of these is for the specific, you know, battle it's, it plays in, or the environment it plays in. Like, look at all these. I didn't even realize there were so many different, like, indoor themes. <laughs> or, like, various outside, uh, what's it called, themes. Something we only heard once. <laughs> what is this? S-E, black one? Oh, these are sound effects. Wow. Ooh, I like this song a lot. So. Oh, and it's going to continue to play as we look through the rest of the art book. Oh, so now we can look at this. Cool. Okay, design works. There's more to see. <laughs> Chapters, design works. This is a really cool image. Honestly, like, with the with the curated music in the background, I feel like I'm in a museum of sorts, right? Yuriko's Kata, Ren Hojo, and of course Miu Hinasaki, um, our mentor Hisoka Kurosawa, and then Rui. Rui, who I think honestly is, is the weakest character <laughs> in the game, unfortunately, but... Aw, oh, man. Bring that audio back. Please. I don't know why it changed, but... Shiragiku. Oops. 
I like this image a lot. That's Ose Kurosawa. Interesting. So when we're zoomed in, it'll play the different music. Oh, it probably plays the music associated with each of these characters. Ose Kurosawa too. That's really cool. Whoa. This is really neat. I love looking at the sketches that were, you know, the, the predecessors to what we actually end up playing with in the game. This concept art for Yuriko's Kata, I really like that hairstyle. Then, he looks so much more, like, gruff and almost like, like he's been working himself to death in this sketch. Interesting. And then Mew, I really like this concept art as well. Whoa! Hisoka looks great too. These these designs are awesome. It's interesting to see how they tried to translate these to the 3D models we played as. And Rui looks so different. Rui looks like she has so much more personality and, and, and definition, you know? Uh, looks far more confident. Miku. Miku looks great. Wow. And then here we have Ose Kurosawa, who looks far more, I don't know, almost almost dark, stern than we see when she's in her white, you know, garb in the game. And then Shiragiku. Interesting. Then there's Aso. The boy, Aso. And Fuyuhi. Fuyuhi looks really neat, too. Whoa. Also shout out to this audio that's playing as we look at this. It, it's really adding to this effect of this is a curated exhibit where you have not just a visual but an aural, you know, an audio experience associated with that visual that harkens back to your experiences in the game uh, to connect you to what you're seeing. It's, it's really cool. Then we have Haruka. Awfully stylish. Oof. This is supposedly Haruka as well. Haruka Momose illustration too, yeah. I really like this, that's really cool. Man, I, w I wish I could get more of this art, like, <laughs> physically, and and put it places I want to see it or, or collect it. You know, this type, who, who is this? Keiji Watarai. Oh, that's right, we've seen, obviously, this ghost quite a bit. And then this would be Kazuya, Ren's friend. Again, somebody we've run into quite a few times. This art is so cool. Oh, and then who are they? Funeral celebrant illustration. Wedding celebrant illustration. Okay, so these seem to be somewhat generic characters. Yet they do have really intricate designs that I think do really well. This design is easily one of the coolest. How do they just black water maiden illustration? Okay. Especially this one, when they've been in the water and, and all that. Pain to fight, but <laughs> really cool. And then this is, of course, what they look like before they become the, the pillars, I believe. Yikes. Black Water Maiden. This person, this is the floating Water Maiden, I believe. Wow, they do such a good job with like the, the blood effects on these characters. Like, look at this. That's incredible. Wow, I remember fighting all of these different enemies. How do they label this? Pale Mistress. Do we know who the Pale Mistress is? They seem like such an important character. It's such a good... Like... This is such a great piece of art, and it's so interesting to hear this sound, too, because I do so intimately associate it with fighting this specific ghost. Wow. And then are these some of the, the children we see running around? Yeah, the three children that are always, you know, with each other. And then the dolls. Oh, they even have, like, a close-up of the eyes. That's really cool. And <laughs> these guys. <laughs> it was always interesting fighting those guys. And then, whoa, look at this. There's so much more detail to him than what we saw in the game. This is a really cool design. Having seen this adds so much more to the experience of actually seeing him in the game. Wow, same with this guy. Because his face doesn't have anywhere near as much detail in the game. 
At least some of the other ghosts we see just like in passing. Yeah, this is so. Hang on a second. So Kirika Reizen. I don't remember that name much, but these are people I think we've read about, you know, and we uh, took snapshots of. Hiyori Magabuchi. I don't remember that name at all. Shino Kururugi. It's interesting that they actually have individual names. We always just, you know, see them as like the Hanged Lady, for example. Yukiho Tomine? I don't know who that is. Tomoki Harakawa. Oh, this is the guy, yeah, who breaks through the window and of Ichiru Manor. Tarito Koizumi. Wow, all these characters have names, have backgrounds, have stories. Some of these illustrations are going to be major Corpse Party vibes. Wow, look at this art. All these enemies. Ah, oh, it's the tall lady! <laughs> Easily one of the creepiest, honestly. And then Ose Kurosawa. This is like, by the final battle, certainly. So impressive. So well done. Such great art. Ayane. Interesting concept art. I think this is specifically about like the concept of how she's going to be presented in Fatal Frame, right? Because I'm sure she has a number of costumes that are in the other series she's presented in, but like how do you show a character that's normally that flashy in a game that's, you know, about more subtle uh, environments and, and stealth, I guess. And then Tsumugi, who I still don't know anything about. And then they have, oh, so now we're going to get into basically all the different characters just wet. So here's Yuri, and then again, a great design. This is, oh, these are the different costumes, too. So there's the white school girl, and then camera obscura. This one is Renz, right? Yeah. And then we have the reliquary. Or wait, that's the reliquary. What's this? The sacred casket. A bunch of audio is playing, but honestly, I'm not really feeling this at the moment. Let's, let's get something a little more chill. Hmm. Maybe. I mean, there's not a lot that's really chill in this, is there? Yeah, this works. The reliquary, and then of course the spirit stone flashlight. There's so much detail when you zoom in on them. And I guess that's it for the design works. And then lastly, there's the world materials. Oh my goodness, the environments. I've talked <laughs> arguably too much about how beautiful each of them is. I'm so excited to see all this art for them. This is admittedly not as pretty as I expected. <laughs> it, it looks like it's got some sort of like rendered filter on it or something. This is neat. This pathway reminds me of the, the title screen. We spent quite a bit of time in this unfathomable forest. Ah, uh, the doll shrine. That's neat. Yeah, I will say the way they captured these environments, they don't come off quite as pretty as they do in the game, but it is still cool to revisit a bunch of them. And to see some of these areas from angles, you know, that we haven't in quite some time. Twilight Peak. Ooh, they're the red spider lilies. I thought were really nice. Shrine on the water. And that's that's it? Okay. Alright, and then of course, lastly, there's, ju there's just the audio. I'm not going to listen through every single song with you guys here, but... It is really cool that they have the art on the side, too. Um, let's see. I can play, like, the credit song. Actually, well, I should try to avoid the credit song. That gets each... 
every video, including the credit song, gets copyright strike. So that's that's not what I want to do. Let's see. Love After Life? Yeah, let's go with that. So, anyways, this Digital Deluxe Edition actually has a lot more to offer. It's actually quite cool to see, um, because I'm, I'm never a person who... I very rarely buy games digitally, period. And if I do, I don't really splurge and go for something like a Digital Deluxe Edition. I, I never really went on my way to get a digital artwork, or like art book or anything like that. But the way they've presented it here, almost like a little museum exhibit, uh, is really well done. I think they do a great job of showing off a lot of art that provides behind the scenes looks at the concepts, um, you know, an extra safe gaze at a lot of the assets used in the game um, outside of their environments and you know showing them with all the detail that we don't necessarily see in the game sometimes and we get to listen to music that's tailored curated for each viewing experience so this was a really cool addition to this game and i'm really glad that i had the opportunity to look through it and so with that, I think we're going to wrap up all the extras with this game, and that's going to wrap up everything I have to offer this Let's Play. I hope you guys enjoyed it, as I said at the you know end of the finale proper. Uh, but for those of you that have been watching these bonus episodes going that extra mile, again, I really do appreciate your support. I really appreciate your interest. Having you guys along this journey makes it that much more enjoyable for me as well. And I hope you guys have enjoyed it too. This game was a lot of fun to play, uh, even in you know the extras. Those last thre those threads <laughs> at the end with Ayane were a blast to play through, and experiencing all of this extra content was really enjoyable too. So I'm looking forward to eventually playing this in nightmare mode, and I will certainly be playing the other Fatal Frame games. So look forward to those in the future. But until the next episode of whatever it is of mine you decide to watch. This is Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete. Oh, I've got a great idea. <laughs> this is gonna take forever, but this is so worth it. Come on, come on. <laughs> Alright, let's try this again. This is Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete.